My name's Mike Marks. I'm the hired help. We're going to talk about special pricing authorization practices, SPAs, and, and maybe add a little insight. We just did a research project. I'm going to share the results of that research project with everybody. Um, best way to keep a secret used to be to write a book about it and put it in a public library. Now the best way to keep a secret is to put a report together, put it on a website, and nobody will see it. So if you notice in front of you, there's a, there's a flyer. You can download this white paper for free. This is part of what you get. The CAP Council funded this research. And there's a number of other documents in terms of SPA vocabulary and specifics. And, and I know this may be a little frustrating, especially if you, if you spend most of your life in sales. But to get this right, you need to be somewhat anal retentive. It's all in the details. And, and everything is laid out. It's almost like um, I hated GPSs. You know, because I, I always used to tell my wife I was taking the scenic tour and, and now I had a GPS and got lost anyway. I mean, all the instructions are here in terms of how to put a lot of this stuff together. So at that point, you're on your own. Um, we're going to go through this discussion. Um, if you want a copy of this presentation, all you have to do is go to our website. And you, it's downloadable. You don't have to tell us who you are, but you need a username and a password. Our Indian River website is ircg.com. And you plug in your username, which is NAED in caps, and then SPA practices, no space, all capital letters. And we're giving you copyright permission to do whatever you want to do with this material inside your own company. We know you're going to do it anyway, but that way there's no bad karma. Go in peace. Um, now, this is just the summary deck. And there's some things that we could talk about sort of at a high level, but there's, this is just maybe 20% of what's actually in the white paper. The white paper goes into a lot of specifics and examples and more. This is more what and why. The white paper's how, if that makes a distinction. And there, all these other appendices that NAD has put together pretty much gives you a roadmap if you decide to do anything. Um, so go in peace, enjoy the copy. Who are we? Uh, we're the people who did the research project. We're for those of you that don't know, we've done a lot of work in this industry. I, I don't know how many non-disclosure agreements we have in this industry, but it's, it's, it's something under 50, but well over 20. Um, we teach the pricing program at the University of in, in Innovative Distribution. I think a lot of the people in the CAP Council, when they were looking to get the research done, part of it is that a lot of the people on the CAP Council are clients of ours, and we've helped them with pricing practices so they know that we know. I mean, sort of the running joke had always been that, that uh, my next to the last day in the industry, I'd violate all my non-disclosure agreements, but then I'd have to get off the planet. But, but so we know a fair amount about this. Uh, Erica Tenick, who's also in the room here, runs the research department for NAD. And, and, and she did yeoman's work in terms of getting this through the legal department. And I just need to kind of get that up front for everybody. The report looks very different before legal review. You can't say that. Okay, and so we kind of kept moving it around. NAD basically put this together so you can get the, the content in terms from a commercial benefit, but to make sure that we all can still go through this and wear a white hat. So having said that, you're relatively safe because this session's being recorded. I want everybody in, how many people in this room have ever been deposed in their life? How many, pants down, how many people enjoy being deposed? Right, so, so, Plan on somebody deposing you on competitive pricing practices, and I want you to be able to say, I don't remember the guy's name, but I remember we talked about this antitrust disc disclaimer, and, and the federal antitrust laws are very, very fact-intensive. In other words, there's a body of law and guiding principles, but each situation is specific. So there's no such thing as an easy antitrust case. So, my job and NAD's job is to present this information so you're clean and we are not going to have any discussions or communications that will limit competition in any way. We're not going to be talking about price bids, fee schedules. I mean, everybody's clear on that. And if you notice up here, item one through three, we're certainly not going to go here because Frank, in 90 minutes we couldn't get very far. And we're also not going to be talking about any specific customers. So as long as we comply with this and this and keep all the confidential information out, what we can do, and this is the part that's really interesting, is talk about industry practices. And we can talk about dumb stuff and smart stuff. Is everybody familiar with the terms? 
right? And, is it, and, and this may not surprise you, but there's a lot of dumb stuff that we do with spas. And, and a lot of the wounds that we have in the industry, in fact, are self-inflicted. So having said that, I want to give you a context in this project. Spas started in this industry a long time ago. The first start was in the lighting business. I came out of the electronic component distribution business where virtually 100% of everything is on a spa, 100%. And, and when I started, when I, because I'd come into the, this industry back in 70, no, 89, it had already had traction. And I said, don't go there, don't go there, but everybody's trying to sell more and more and more. And, and the whole thing just sort of spread through. SPA stands for special pricing authorization. It was supposed to be special. But if you think about it, how many transactions are you involved with today that involve spas. I mean, they're, they're almost the norm and for a lot of lines of trade. I mean, there's just, it just it's, it's here. The industry has done two prior projects trying to figure out how do we get ahead of this, because everybody went off and did their own thing. Everybody's standard was different. Every manufacturer had a different approach. Part of the problem we have is that a lot of the manufacturers, especially the big ones, have developed a system so that their distributors are all on the same system. All right, I'm going to go out of my way to not name names, but if you just think about all the major manufacturers, if you're an X guy, you're using, you're processing spas that way, and as far as that manufacturer is concerned, the industry standardized because all their distributors do it that way. The issue, if you're a distributor and you have multiple lines, everybody's got a different system, and the complexity just, just spirals out of control. There was a huge project that was done back in 2006 that actually laid out a lot of the roadmap to have this thing work. But part of what it didn't deal with is it didn't deal with the commercial aspects and the money. When I was young, I thought it was all about the money. Now that I'm old, I was right, it's all about the money. And, and if somebody, is, think about this for a second. If somebody has spent a lot of time and money to create competitive advantage in a marketplace, right? Because if I'm a manufacturer and I've got distributors that are aligned with me, I want to kick everybody else's butt. And if I build some very effective pricing practices, why do I want to give away my secret sauce to anybody else? And, and, and there's no way in the world I'm going to share that. It makes no sense, right? I'm, I have an obligation to my shareholders, so I can't share it. So what happened is, is that process, even though it laid out the framework for how do we take a lot of the administrative burden out of it, it didn't deal with the commercial aspects and it didn't go anywhere. What this project did is it built on those rather than starting from scratch and started to say, where do we actually go? So what we ended up doing is we did a limited scope, didn't want to burn a bunch of money. We leveraged a bunch of our relationships with clients. We did 31 confidential interviews. Now, what I should tell you, any good research should be replicatable. In other words, another researcher should be able to use the same process, come up with the same answer. The one thing I need to mark out here is that half of these people were Indian River clients on the manufacturer side and the distributor side. So all of a sudden you're talking to a manufacturer and he goes, well, let me tell you the rest of the story. And we ended up with probably not over 100 gigabytes of data that was shared with us with manufacturers and distributors and rip and reorder forms and, and all the crazy stuff that's going on and all the chargebacks and, and all the emotional stories. So we got things that a normal researcher wouldn't get because a lot of these discussions were within a confidentiality agreement. This has been scrubbed by NAD legal counsel, so we're okay, but, but we've got some very candid responses and, and a lot of it would end up being limited to one-on-one -on -one bar conversations, not an open session. So here's what we looked at, and we limited what we looked at, and this is where the big pain point was. And what we did is we didn't focus on discounts given at time of order entry. In other words, somebody's building a big stadium project and there's a giant lighting and gear that's, you know, $20 million and every, it, it's, it's a discount given. We've done the whole package. What we focused on was ship from stock and debit payable. In other words, the distributor has inventory in stock. I bought it at distributor book purchase price. It turns out that that purchase price, distributor cost, is higher than street price. And so what happens, a manufacturer gives you a discount that you can apply to future purchases and so that you end up effectively with overvalued inventory. Is everybody with me fundamentally? And that is where the pain is in the industry in terms of the transaction and the transaction matching. So if you know, there's gonna be a lot of comments in green. 
And the reason that the manufacturers, from their point of view, like, for, and got to remember, ship from stock and debit to us as a distributor means ship from stock and credit as a manufacturer, right? You've got to have a corresponding uh, transaction. It makes it easier because they, they don't have to match invoices and POs. They can just look at invoices to customers. There were several comments made, and we explore this a little bit in the white paper, that a lot of manufacturers do not get point of sale from distributors. Some manufacturers have limited distribution, some have single distribution, some have open distribution, and a lot of distributors, rightfully so, are very reluctant to provide point of sale data. This is a mechanism for a manufacturer to obtain some point of sale data when you have not very limited or open distribution. So, so we focused just on this, which is the bulk of the pain and the noise in the industry. So we excluded everything else. So why are they around and, and why won't they go away? There have been all kinds of efforts and discussions and emotional speeches, and I can't, it, it's, for those of you that have been in the industry a long time, this has been with us a long time. You know, the one interesting thing, I mean, how many, how many people here have teenagers? Right? How many people like teenagers? Wow, same hand. Good for you. Well, that, there you go. That's the, they're out of the house. When you, if you think about the teenage thing, I mean, there's a lot of times you go through the challenge and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, how did I end up doing this? It, and you're saying it seemed like a good idea at the time, but they grow out of it, you know, and, and the problem goes away. And, and the, the big eyebrow ring and all the other crazy stuff, and they get out of college and they have kids and things go back to being normal. We started with spas thinking that we had all this crazy stuff and you know what, we'd figure it out, but it's like we're still in the teenage years. It's like we're in puberty and it's all screwed up. That's a technical consulting term. So it's just this thing has not gone away. They are persistent and, and, and fundamentally, it has become a foundation tool in this industry and people don't like it, but the reason why is because of the power of distribution. One thing that makes this industry different than the other industrial and construction channels is the power of the distributor. And when I talk about the power of the distributor, it's all about the money. Think about the percentage of business. Think electrical products, and, and you can separate construction, utility, industrial. I mean, there's overlapping products, but if you look at those three markets and you start to say what percentage of the dollars that are produced by manufacturers go through distribution, and it's extremely high, and it's higher in this industry than any of the other industrial channels. Why? Right? Is it because manufacturers love distributors? No. What's their next best alternative? People buy from distributors because customers want to buy from distributors. Manufact think about a hot dog. Manufacturers make the wiener, and they can all talk about, you know, this wiener's better than the other wiener. The channel provides the bun and the condiments and the chili and the cheese, and all the customer wants is lunch. I mean, imagine the chaos if you're going to try to do a major construction project and you're, going to, you're a contractor and you're going to source all your products at Home Depot, right? There's a lot of smi smiling faces in the room like this is going to be a train wreck, right? This is like getting the Republicans and Democrats to get together on government policy. It's just not going to happen. So fundamentally, if you look at the range of situations that we serve, we do everything from, from selling simple copper wire and spools. We do all kinds, I mean, there's some very complex things we're doing in terms of staging wire and pulling and harnesses and packaging. And, and, and we've got lifestyle contractors. We have huge complex things that require government security clearances. We've got every, look at the range that we handle. This industry handles the gamut. Now here's the issue. We were very involved in the industry back when we started this whole thing with the home centers. You guys remember back in the mid 90s, everybody had this, this sort of emotional thing. You know, the manufacturers are selling direct to Home Depot and Lowe's and, and you know what? They're selling at prices that are lower than distributor into stock price. Anybody remember that angst and emotion? Well, think about it for a second. The home center basically services small lifestyle contractors and unlicensed installers. Isn't that their marketplace? They can't do any major projects. They don't have project management services. They don't have any of the capability to do the complex wire pulls that you guys do. They don't have any of that capability. Can they program a PLC? What is a PLC? I mean, they don't even try it. 
So my point is, we service this broad range, they service and get a single price, they get a single price to serve a very small segment. And by the way, the electrical margin in home centers across the board is in the low to mid 30s in gross margin, just to frame it for you. All right, so you're going there buying lower, but they're selling higher than most of you guys sell on the counter. Just go check it. I mean, the data's out there. There's, there's all kinds of journals and magazines that kind of track those indices. But we are highly adaptable. And the fundamental thing that's going to change, as long as there are customers that will buy above list, the manager will lose, the manufacturer will lose margin if they lower your into stock price. 